Hello dear students, welcome to the course of Engineering Thermodynamics. Myself, Mehir Mistri, Assistant Professor from Mechanical Department of LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. So today we are going to continue our session on Chapter Entropy and in particular we are going to discuss about maximum work obtainable from two finite bodies at temperature T1 and T2 respectively. So here students, this is nothing but the application of entropy principle. So for understanding purpose, we will observe the diagram given on the screen. So as you can see, initially we will take two bodies that are at temperatures T1 and T2. Let us say if we put two bodies together in contact with each other, then T1 temperature is let us say for example higher temperature, T2 is lower temperature. So after a certain time, the T1 body will decrease its temperature and this heat will transfer to the body at T2 temperature and T2 body temperature will increase. So after a certain time what will happen as we have already discussed during the mixing of fluid that after a certain time both bodies will attain an intermediate temperature that is known as Tf. Okay, so lo lower the Tf would be uh, the maximum work that we can achieve from the body. Okay, let us understand that. So now we will, what we will do, we will use T1 as our source reservoir and T2 as our sink reservoir and in between these two bodies we will operate a heat engine, cyclic heat engine. So as you can see this cyclic heat engine will extract Q1 amount of heat from T1 body and it will reject Q2 amount of heat at T2 body and it will do some work W that is equivalent to Q1 minus Q2. Okay, now here the Fire, intermediate temperature that can be evaluated will be equal to Tf is equal to nothing but T1 plus T2 divided by 2 when two bodies are in contact with each other. Initially, let us say if a nothing, no engine is operating in between and if you simply put two bodies together then T1 and T2 will attain temperature Tf and that Tf temperature can be found out by this equation that is Tf is equal to T1 plus T2 divided by 2 that is nothing but average. Okay, now what will happen? Uh, you can extract maximum work as low as you can reduce the Tf. Okay, so here what we will do? Now we are separating these two bodies and we will operate a heat engine in between these two bodies. So now here first of all Q1 heat that is nothing but heat extracted at constant pressure from a T1 body. So that will be equivalent to Cp into T1 minus Tf. Right, because here Tf is taken as the reference. See what will happen, students. Simple when a heat engine is operating, the body T1 is uh, rejecting Q1 amount of heat to the heat engine. So, this temperature T1 will decrease slowly, slowly. Okay, and it will reach to the value of Tf. Okay, and same way, this heat engine will reject the heat to. Q2 to the T2 temperature body and this T2 temperature will increase slowly slowly and will reach to Tf. So obviously initially we will have difference between this T1 and T2 and this difference will become smaller and smaller as soon as the engine will operate and produce some work. Okay, So there will be one time at which this hot body will attain the temperature of Tf, Tf and same way the cold body will also attain the temperature of Tf. So at that time, no work will be produced because both bodies are at same temperature. Okay, so that is called as equilibrium state. Okay, so that is why we have considered the Tf as the final temperature for both the bodies. Okay, so now heat is transferred such that Q1 is equal to what Cp, T1 minus Tf because the hot body or top body will start the process at T1 temperature and the heat exchange Q1 will be stopped when the body will reach the temperature of Tf. So that is why Q1 is equal to Cp into T1 minus Tf. Same way Q2 is equal to what? Cp into Tf minus T2 because same way this uh, low temperature body will also gaining the heat will start gaining the heat and due to that its temperature will rise and the process of Accepting the heat will stop when the temperature will reach to Tf. Okay, so that is why Q2 is equal to what? How much heat this lower body temperature uh, can consume? Simple, Q2 is equal to Cp into Tf minus T2. Okay, so now network then is equal to what? Network then is equal to difference between these two heat transfers. So Q1 minus Q2. So now let us 
submit the value of the Q1 and Q2 respectively in the equation. So CB we will take as common. So we will have T1 plus T2 minus 2 TF, right? So now here you can observe students that for given value of CP, T1 and T2, because CP, T1 and T2, let us keep that, uh, keep those three values as fixed. Okay, so if you will keep those three values as fixed and if you want to achieve maximum work, then you will have to decrease this TF. The more you will decrease the TF, the maximum work you will get. Okay, okay, so that is why here what will happen, we will try to minimize this TF. How minimum the TF can be achieved? Let us find it out. Okay, so now we will take entropy help for that. So now, first of all, the top level entropy change that is delta S1 will be equal to what? So you know that integration of CP or because you, you know delta S is equal to heat transfer dq dr by t, integration of heat transfer dq dr by t. So here heat transfer dq will be equal to what? Cp into dt, right? Cp you will take as common, so integration of dt by t. If you will do integrate that, that will be ln t and substitute the limits there. The limits are t1 to tf, right? So you will have the equation of delta s1 as Cp ln tf by t1. Same way delta s2 can be found out as Cp ln tf by t2. Okay, so now we know that for any reversible or irreversible processes, delta S of universe shall be greater than or equal to zero. So here, delta S universe is equal to what? Nothing but delta S1 plus delta S2. Substitute the value of delta S1 and S2 together in this equation. You will get CPLN TF by T1 plus CPLN TF by T2 greater than or equal to zero. Now observe students over here that uh, CP can be taken as common. Now ln tf by t1 plus ln tf by t2 that will be in the bracket. Now and you know the rules of mathematics that if you have addition of two nature logs then you can multiply the terms. So that is why ln tf into tf, tf square divided by denominator is also multiplied. So t1 into t2, right? So that is why this equation is written in modified form like this. Okay, so that will be greater than or equal to zero. Now if we want tf to be minimum what we will have to do we know that if tf minimum is uh, attained or tf minimum is our target then what we will have to do the process shall be reversible and in order to do the process reversible the greater than equal to sign will be replaced by equal to sign so that is why cp ln tf square by t1 t2 will be equivalent to zero instead of greater than equal to okay so now here we also know that if you take natural log of 1 that will be also equal to 0. So now observe here that on the right hand side we have 0 0 and on the left hand side in the bottom equation we have Cp ln Tf square by T1 T2 and on the top equation on the third column we have ln 1. So we can compare the left hand side of both the equations. So let us compare that. So if we will compare that then simple you can get Tf square divided by T1 T2 is equivalent to 1, 9. Now, if you will take or make Tf as the subject, so that will be equivalent to under root of T1 and T2, right? So now, substitute this value of Tf in the equation of W, then it will lead us to the maximum work that is attainable between two finite body temperature difference, okay? So W max will be equal to Cp into T1 plus T2 minus under root T1, T2. And you can also rewrite as Cp in bracket under root T1 minus under root T2 whole square. Okay. So that is how you can obtain maximum work from two finest body at different temperatures. Okay, students. Now let us discuss what numerical that is given on the screen. So read the given data. Determine the entropy change of universe if two copper blocks of 1 kg and 0.5 kg at 150 degree Celsius and 0 degree Celsius are joined together. Specific heat for copper at 150 degree Celsius and 0 degree Celsius are 0.393 kJ per kg Kelvin and 0.381 kJ per kg Kelvin. Okay, so let us write down the given data for students. So as you can see, we have two copper blocks are coming into contact with each other. So you already know the principle of entropy application. Right, entropy principle application. So, according to that application, we know that if you will uh, 
make contact of two bodies that heat will start transferring and according to that you can write down the entropy correlation okay so here let us consider we will denote the one symbol or one subscript for 1 kg block and we will denote two subscript for 5 kg block so m1 is equal to 1 kg m2 is equal to 0.5 kg now t1 that is 150 degrees Celsius equivalent to 423 Kelvin and T2 is equal to 0 degrees Celsius equivalent to 273 Kelvin. Specific heats are given C1 and C2 right respectively. Now we know that if we put two blocks together then what will happen? Let us say this one is having temperature of 150 and this one is having temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. Then obviously heat will transfer from 150 to 0 degrees Celsius and both blocks will attain intermediate value after a certain time. So that intermediate value, let us denote it by Tf, then you can say that whatever amount of heat is transferred from this 150 degree Celsius block, same amount of heat will be received by this 0 degree Celsius block. So let us write down the heat transfer equivalence as M1C1 T1 minus Tf is equivalent to M2C2 Tf minus T2. You will make Tf as a subject. So that is why you can write the equation like this and in this equation we will substitute the value of M1, C1, T1, M2, C2, T2 and you can have the value of Tf as 374.01 Kelvin. So this tells us that eventually after a certain time when you will make these two blocks in contact with each other so both blocks will attain this temperature. Okay and obviously it should be the intermediate temperature between 150 degrees Celsius and 0 degrees Celsius or 423 Kelvin and 273 Kelvin. Okay, so now let us consider the entropy change corresponding to the block at 150 degrees Celsius. Okay, so delta S1 is equal to F1 C1 ln Tf by T1. Right, we know that if temperature is getting changed, then we can write the equation delta S1 is equal to M1 C1 ln Tf by T1. Here we have the value of M1, C1, Tf and T1 substitute the value. So delta S1 will be how much? Minus 0 0.048 kilojoule per Kelvin. Here students I have mentioned minus symbol. Why? Because observe the 150 degree Celsius block or 1 kg block is rejecting its heat to the block of 0 degree Celsius. So when heat is rejected, so that is why the entropy change is taken negative over here. Okay, same way let us consider the entropy change for second block. So you can write m 2 c 2 ln Tf by T2. Simple, substitute all the values then you will have the value of delta S2 as 0.2398 kilojoule per Kelvin. This will be obviously positive because block 0 degree Celsius is achieving some heat from block which is at 150 degree Celsius. So heat is added to this block that is why it will be positive entropy change. And you know that delta S of universe is equal to delta S1 plus delta S2 addition of two subsystems. So that is why if you will add this two then you will have the final entropy change of universe as 0 0.1918 kilojoule per Kelvin and obviously it shall be greater than zero. That means it is irreversible process. Okay, now let us for discuss further one more example. A cool body at temperature T1 is brought in contact with high temperature reservoir at temperature T2. Body comes in equilibrium with reservoir at constant pressure. Considering heat capacity of body as C, show that entropy change of universe can be given as C into bracket T1 minus T2 by T2 minus ln T1 by T2. Now very simple uh, fundamental uh, concept is asked over here. A cool body of temperature T1, let us say this is our cool body at temperature T1, is brought in contact with high temperature reservoir. Let us say this is the high temperature reservoir which is having temperature of T2. Okay, so this T2 temperature reservoir is made to contact in the uh, cold body that is having temperature T1. So you know that as soon as you will uh, make the contact of reservoir, or cold body with hot body then what will happen heat will start transferring so from here also heat will start transferring from this reservoir to this body right now we have two aspects over here one aspect is in pers in context of this reservoir find out the entropy change and second aspect is in context of this body find out the entropy change and if you will 
add these two entropy changes then you will get the total entropy change of universe simple students right so here let us first find out whatever amount of heat is absorbed by this cold body so you know that this cold body is coming in contact with t2 temperature right so t2 is higher temperature right and t1 is lower temperature so heat transfer q is equal to c delta t right according to that the heat absorbed by the cold body is written over here right so now further remember students this heat is added to the system right or heat is absorbed by the body that is why it will be positive right further entropy change for body 1 ok so now this body 1 for that let us find out the entropy change so what will be the entropy change the entropy change for the body will be very simple that is integration of dq by t from temperature 1 to temperature because the final temperature is 2 see what we have the definition of the reservoir is what its temperature will remain constant no matter how much amount of heat you are extracting from itself so that is why whenever this cold body is coming into contact with this reservoir it's the reservoir temperature d2 will remain constant so that is our final temperature that means the cold body which is initially at even temperature when it will come in contact with this reservoir the body temperature will also get t2 after a certain time interval ok so that is why you can write down the delta S1 as integration of T1 to T2 dq by T right so dq by T so you know that uh, dq is equal to C dt right so C we will take as common so integration is C ln T right substitute the limit so C ln T2 by T1 that will be our uh, change in entropy corresponding to the body right same way entropy change for reservoir so for reservoir we can write down the entropy change delta S2 as Q1 divided by T2 because heat is transferred, Q1 amount of heat is transferred to this cold body and the reservoir temperature is maintained T2 as constant, right? So Q1 amount of heat transfer, so how much heat transfer can be written? Simple, C into delta T. So C into delta T divided by this T2, right? So according to that, this entropy change of reservoir is written here negative sign can be shown because the entropy change for reservoir we are writing that means the reservoir is rejecting some heat that is why rejection of heat is generally identified as negative sign so the entropy change corresponding to the reservoir can be written as negative right so here entropy change of universe will be what delta s universe is equal to delta s1 plus delta s2 right so here delta S1 plus delta S2 substitute the value of delta S1 and S2 then if you will substitute the, that's, those values then after rearrangement and in the reciprocating the natural log terms we can have the final equation of delta S universe as asked which is delta S universe is equal to C into bracket T1 minus T2 divided by T2 minus ln T1 divided by T2 okay so very simple concept so today we are going to keep up to this point thank you